If you like CSS Grid, you have to hear about CSS Subgrid because it can solve a very common and annoying issue. Picture this. You have defined a grid layout for a few cards and everything looks fine at first. But the moment you fill in some text, suddenly the layout breaks. The buttons are not on the same level because the text varies in length. So to fix this, you would have to define another layout inside the cards. Though the problem is, these new layouts are not connected with each other in any way. If one card has a bigger heading, for example, the others will not know that and it does not change their position. Which is why in this video I want to teach you about CSS Subgrid. The cool thing is, unlike most modern CSS tricks, this one actually has great browser support. CSS Subgrid allows you to nest grid layouts and inherit grid rules from a parent layout onto a children's layout. Here's how it works. We have a simple wrapper that uses CSS Grid to place three cards next to each other. Each card has a heading, a text and a button. They also have some very basic styles in a separate CSS file. But since they are not important for the layout, let's skip them and instead only focus on what's important. The grid layout I have here. Using grid template columns, I created three columns, one for each card. Having defined only that, we get this problem with the buttons sitting on different vertical positions. Now, if you don't know anything about CSS subgrid, you might try fixing this with Flexbox. You would use Flex Grow on the paragraph, which will make it grow and push the button down. And this will work totally fine. Alternatively, you might use a grid layout inside the cards, and then create three rows where the one in the middle uses one fraction. That would also work. I have talked about these solutions in my grid versus flexbox video. But in this video, I want to show you the subgrid solution. To make this work, we first need a grid layout inside the cards. So right now we have nested grid layouts. Once we do that, we can see in the browser how every grid item has its own row. There's one for the heading, one for the text and one for the button. The only problem is they all exist independently. So this row right here does not know anything about the row of its siblings. And in order for them to align correctly, they should depend from each other. So we know the solution has something to do with the rows, but instead of having three automatically created rows in each card, we should use the rows from the parent wrapper. That way, all the elements follow the same grid tracks. To achieve this, let's use grid template rows subgrid. This tells the card, don't create your own independent row track. Use the same row tracks as your parent grid. That means if the wrapper has three rows, each card now has the exact same three rows, same number, same sizes. But if we take a look at the browser window, we can only see the buttons. And it looks quite weird. That is because we are missing one last piece of information. We need to tell the entire subgrid how far it should span. And if we picture a three row grid in our mind, we can count the number of grid lines. Three rows means four lines. So using the grid row property, we can tell the card to stretch from line one to line four. And with that, all the items of the cards will align with each other. All the headings align, all the text blocks align, and all the buttons align. If one of them changes in size, it will affect the other cards. Now, while this works great for a basic grid like this, there will be a problem if this was a responsive grid. You might know this method where we use repeat autofit to get a wrapping grid. Here, the amount and size of columns changes with the screen size. Now, this line of code is correct and it would work in any other project. But right here, it will not work because we are confusing the grid by hard coding into the grid row property. We're telling it to go from line 1 to line 4 but the number of rows changed on a different screen size. Luckily, there's a simple fix. Instead of hard coding line one and four, let's simply write span three. And now the grid can wrap again while still keeping the subgrid. Though a side effect of using subgrid is that you will also pass on any gap that you apply to the parent. Right now I'm using column gap for the distance between the cards. And if I want vertical gaps, I have to use row gap. Now I'm going to exaggerate by using 3EM to show you this better, because that way you can see the problem. The gap I have declared will not only be used between the cards, it will also be used between the contents of the card. So between the heading and the text and the text and the button. That is because we're using a subgrid on the rows. So it will create bigger gaps between the contents of the card. To get rid of them, simply override the gap property inside the cards. That is just something to watch out for. If you enjoyed this little piece of CSS knowledge, you might also enjoy this video right here. My name is Fabian and this was Coding2Go. I will see you in the next video.